Hello again YouTube, Chris Val here with the next installment of my review play series and yeah, I am sticking with the name review play because <clears throat> as this comprehensive graph can show you, my creativity levels are at a record high. Before I begin, I just want to say how blown away I am with the reception of my Azua Dreams video. It's been awesome being able to interact with you guys on such an old game and I'm thankful that you've checked it out and left me some cool things there for me to read and test out so uh, without sounding too wanky, thanks again guys for checking out that video. Um, except for you, Liam Kennington. Pfft, you sound like a six foot gorilla. <laughs> This time around, I'm doing another title that was a huge part of my childhood and if you haven't guessed by the cinematics so far, it's got everything a six-year-old kid would want. Big shooty robots, explosions and clearly... um... Uh, pilot diversity. Based within the Battletech universe, Mech Commander is a real-time strategy game developed by FASA Interactive and published by Microprose in 1998. And it throws you in the commander's seat of Zulu Company, a division within the 1st Davian Guards involved in Operation Bulldog in 3059. Since the clan invasion, houses in the Inner Sphere have begun launching a full-scale counter-attack against the clans to reclaim what was taken during the invasion which includes the planet of Port Arthur, where you and several other companies are assigned to liberate. While on the surface level it's a decent enough story to launch into the game, this game, or parts of it anyway, is considered non-canon in the Battletech universe. So as much as I could attempt to dive into the lore, this video could become really dry and a highly convoluted recount of war and planetary history which pff, if you wanted to watch dry content, you could always watch one of my Bioshock videos. <laughs> this game is definitely a change of pace from previous titles like MechWarrior 2, which instead of managing just your mech, you now have a small handful of mech warriors, some light battle mechs, and a small amount of sea bills to begin your campaign against fighting the clan smoke jaguars on planet. Once you deploy your pilots enough in missions, they'll eventually gain enough experience to increase their rank to pilot heavier classes of mech, and with enough training remove the awful RNG for accuracy when engaging in combat. Got it sir. Man I can't see through the smoke. The gameplay has the standard learning curve like any strategy game to understand what mech and weapon does what but overall it's all relatively simple but hard to master. I think to truly get the full experience of this game, the difficulty has to be set on hard to actually experience the influence the Smoke Jaguars have on planet. You could break down the gameplay in two phases. The logistics phase, which is managing your mechs and their loadout, assign the appropriate pilots based on their rank and the mech's weight class, and also pick vehicles to accompany you should you need them. Then there's the mission phase where you're controlling your units on planet to achieve your objectives and engaging in combat. For me, the greatest thing about this game was the ability to be able to customise the loadouts of your mech however you wanted. In other mech titled games, loadouts would be fixed hard points for specific weapon types, but here you can either go for a balanced approach with a variety of mixed range weapons and either missile, ballistic or energy weapons, or just do whatever you want and pretend you're the Persian army against King Leonidas. The mission phase is where the relatively simple but hard to master aspect comes in. Whilst it is the main element of the game, it doesn't come without some shortfalls and glitches. I ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. Moving your units around is easy enough once you get the hang of using your hotkeys to set up routes to move to, conserving ammo and so on, but some of the world assets such as bridges in particular is... <laughs> just as bad as emerging driver here in Australia. Actually, 
I, t- I take that back, drivers here are absolute crap. If I had to be critical about one part of the game is that the use of vehicles within your lance is about as useful as an arts degree. Rather than occupy a slot where a mech with stronger armor, speed and firepower can go, I felt there was no point in wasting tonnage in a vehicle to drop into a combat zone. In my opinion, the developers knew this, so including a mission where it's solely an APC and a vehicle under 15 tons meant that purchasing a vehicle wasn't a waste of time. This goes without saying, however, some vehicles like the mine layer and the repair truck are very handy if used well and budgeted accordingly. On the other hand, vehicles like the Minesweeper were useless, considering that you can do the same job with energy weapons without wasting a drop space. For the soundtrack, whilst it's probably not the greatest, I can appreciate the composer's method of not making it the typical heavy distorted electric guitar chugging riffs cliche as you charge into war. But it's more of an elegant approach of orchestrated strings and horns, deep percussion and tons of ambience. For me, I think it's a great representation of House Davian being of a relatively noble background, so I guess maintaining that standard of class and battle and in music suits the overall feeling well. Specifically, when you defeat an enemy mech, the triumphant motif of victory that gets played as you charge on is just... Perfection. The pilot dialogue on the other hand left much to be desired. In fact, at some stages it gets so repetitive that you go borderline psychotic. I'd say it's because they tried to cram as much as they could on an 800 megabyte CD that they couldn't really do much with it but have a few select lines to make it seem dynamic. Although it does come in handy sometimes if you're like me and get distracted with five bags of chicken twisties and they just sit on my computer watching anime. (laughs) <laughs> the graphics for this game was a real step up from other real-time strategy games like Command and & Conquer and you'd actually think that this game was 3D instead of isometric just with the way the sprites were designed. The mechs themselves are impressively detailed on planet and I also love the profiles in the mech bay just detailing any damage to the armor or the internals of a mech. How I've wished for a remastered version of this game, not just to go play Mech Commander 2, but to see this world through high definition eyes since my eyes see in widescreen anyway. (laughs) With the expansion pack, you were deployed to a separate planet after the Port Arthur invasion called Cermak, and it brought a new landscape, some new technologies and mechs, and a campaign that was interesting enough to play. It actually solved the lack of medium mech variety on Port Arthur by adding the Shadow Cat and the Bushwhacker. So overall, I thought that Mech Commander was a solid game and I guarantee that people wouldn't pick it up nowadays, but for me, despite some bugs and its minor flaws here and there, it's still one of those classic games that you go back to occasionally and still get a kick out of it. And well, I, yeah, well, English. <laughs> that about wraps up my review, so thank you so much for watching. Drop the equivalent tonnage of likes on this video if you enjoyed it. Bloody hell, did I actually write that in my script? Oh my god. For those of you who have played it, come share your war stories with us in the comments. And if you're new, thanks for checking out my little channel. And be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. And I I I promise I'll post more than Bioshock every day. I'm sorry. Please forgive. Just an update on that. I'll hopefully be doing a bit more variety on this channel. I I know I go weeks at a time without uploading something, which is something I'm trying to change and I definitely want to move into newer games but but not Fortnite. I'm, I'm enough of a meme already in real life. And and yeah, I'll, I'll get out of my basement and make some real friends to play games with or vlogs or something or, you know, online friends. Add, add me on Steam if you want or not. I'm not your mum. Anyway. See you next time. This video is falling apart. This is Chris Powell signing out.